code, um, go to the link tree and fill that out. Let us know that you're here. You can also find an order of worship or any information you may need on children's youth ministry. Um, all that stuff is there. And so just in case we do some contact tracing, we can uh, do that. We also ask that you keep your mask on the whole time while you're here in worship. Uh, we will do communion today. Uh, if you'd like to come up and do that, um, when you take that back to your seat, you can take your mask off for that. But otherwise, uh, keep your mask on so that, again, we're sharing love, nothing else while we are here. And then uh, the only other announcement that I think I have... Um, what am I saying else I'm missing, is um, if you have a few extra minutes after the service and are willing, we are going to be taking down our, our Christmas gear. And so if you want to help us maybe pull some ornaments down, uh, practice for your own house, maybe you already did that and you're a professional, um, you know, we can do that. Um, so just think about that. If you want to stick around for a few minutes, we would appreciate a few extra hands. We are going to get started this morning by lighting our community candle, something we've done each and every week here. Maybe it's been a couple weeks since we've been together, or a week and a half since we've seen each other. Whether you're worshiping online or here, maybe you're dragging your feet, you're on fire, you're somewhere in between, your, your backside is still hurting from that game last Friday, or maybe you've gotten over it, however, wherever you are, we come here to worship. And we come to worship the God who has created us all, who has redeemed us all, and promises to sustain us all. And we come together as one body to do that. And so in that spirit of worship, I invite you to stand now as we worship together. God, we thank you for your birth. We thank you for your presence among us here today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your light. We thank you for being the God who is with us in the difficult times. The God that holds the light for us. The God that is with us among our midst here and now. 
that you are present with us each and every day, even when we don't feel you. Thank you, God, for being the light, for being our way, for being our hope, for being our joy. And whatever we've come here with today, Father, God, that we just ask that you will hold us, guide us, Show us a new joy this year. Show us a new hope. And may we dare to believe deeper and more meaningful than, than ever before this year. And those things we ask in your name. Amen. Gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to the perfect light. God rest ye merry gentlemen. 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 can have a seat and this time I'd like to invite our kids preschool through second grade I believe you're going Miss Charlotte for Vine Kids today if this is your first time with us um, those kids will be right across the hall right down the hall get a kid sized version of the sermon and scripture reading and then they will join us again for uh, communion and the rest of our service as those kiddos head out and uh, as we prepare to pray before we hear our, our scripture read this morning I do want to mention um, a couple of folks uh, it's been a some people are traveling for the holidays, but uh, I want you to have two folks that have joined the church triumphant over the last two weeks, uh, members of our 
church, typically a traditional service, but also a part of our church family. Um, one, uh, Robbie Barrett, who is the mother of Bob Barrett. She traditionally is that traditional, but Bob is a, a big-time helper and usher over here um, at, at, at the Vine. And then also Doris Littlejohn uh, passed away a few days ago as well, longtime member of the community and also um, our Clemson church. And so we want to pray for their families and hold them up um, as well during this time. And I know that others have lost people along the way and have memories of those folks. And so I just remember to comfort one another in this time. So with all that, uh, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks, Lord, for our new day, for the sunshine, for the breath in our lungs, for the chance to be alive in you. We come to you now as your daughters, as your sons, as your children, standing before you, trusting you with the concerns in our hearts. Lord, we lift up those whom we just mentioned who have joined your church triumphant. We pray for their families. We pray, O oh God, for all those who have lost loved ones recently who are, are, are still mourning and working through that grieving process. We pray, O oh God, that you would wrap your loving arms around them, that they might know your presence, they might know your comfort and your love. We pray, O oh God, that you would use us to be vessels of your comfort and your peace in these situations. God, we pray for all those who are sick and battling illness. We pray for the caregivers who have given their time, their energy, their, their soul, their passion. We pray that you would strengthen them and grant them wisdom and grace as they care for the ill. Lord, we pray for all those who are going back to school soon, both at the college and the elementary, middle, high school, and everywhere in between, oh God. We pray that you would just empower the teachers to teach with grace and wisdom. Give the students open ears and hearts as they soak up knowledge and learn. Oh God, be with us all as we seek to be your disciples in this world, oh God. As we come to you with our concerns, as we bring our joys to you and say thank you, God, even in the midst of the joys and the sorrows, we still want to be your disciples. And so we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Allow us to be your hands and feet. Lord, as we pray for joy, help us to be instruments that bring joy. As we pray for reconciliation, oh God, help us to be movements in that. God, our goal is to worship you. Our goal is to be a people that follow you. And so we pray for your help and for your guidance now. Lord, as we prepare to hear your word read and proclaimed, we pray that you might open our hearts. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see the ways in which you are calling and moving all around us. And in some way, O oh God, we pray that you might speak to us this morning, whether through the word, through your holy table, through our prayers or our praise. Or may we come with a holy expectation that we will meet you here in some way. We love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. We continue on this morning. We read our scripture. It comes from Matthew chapter 2, uh, 1, through, 1, 1 through 12. This is our epiphany reading. Um, it always follows right there after, after Christmas. And perhaps these are familiar words, but I invite you to hear them anew this morning. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I thought it was pretty cool a few weeks ago, as we, as knowing that Epiphany was coming and lead up to Christmas, that we had our world event where the Bethlehem star was going to be seen in its brightest and best in, in over 800 years, right? And I was excited. I didn't know what to expect. We 
uh, experienced the eclipse a few years back, and that was like, wow, amazing. And so I was excited about this Bethlehem star where the planets would line up and it'd be bright and shining, and maybe that was where the, the wise men were that day. And I remember driving around my neighborhood trying to get a good glimpse of it. Right? I could see it from my front yard. I knew the direction. I, I saw it, and I, but I wanted to drive around and drove around different places of Clemson to see what it might look like over different places. And as I drove, um, saw it in my neighborhood, then drove out and then came back, I was driving around my neighborhood, and people lived on the back streets where it was a lot of trees and stuff, had come up to the, to the front street where our house is on, and they're all pointing and looking and gazing, and you could see families and folks, and they had their dogs out, everybody was looking at the star. And I drove by, but I saw one of my neighbors in their yard, and while everyone was going like this, she was in her yard across the street, I'm looking all around, right? And so I pulled over. I said, are you looking for the star? She's like, yeah, where is it? I said, well, look, it's, it's over there. See, it's bright. And she said, oh, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> Walk back into the house, right? Now, maybe you had the same reaction. Right? I'll, be, I'll be honest. I was expecting something bigger, right? After experiencing that eclipse, you want something magnificent. But it was still really cool. But her reaction stuck with me, right? Oh, that's it? I'm going back inside, right? And sometimes we have that feeling as we kind of get past Christmas, the excitement of Christmas Day, where, you know, the next day we're kind of like, oh, oh, that's it, right? Let's go back inside, right? That's, all, that's what all the fuss is about? Ugh. Well, as we come to Epiphany today, I want us to not have that same reaction of, oh, that's it? Right? I want us to really dig in and think about what we might learn from Epiphany, what we might learn from the wise men who traveled to follow the star to see the Christ child, it's that our reaction might be bigger than, oh, that's it? What's the big deal? She's a great neighbor, by the way. I didn't ask permission. I was told that story. But what is epiphany, right? What is epiphany? It means appearance or manifestation, right? But what is the big deal about it? And I want us to sort of walk through four questions that it brings up for me and four questions that I want you to sort of ponder as we begin this, this new year. The first thing we look at when we think of epiphany is we look at the magi, right? The, the wise men who came from the east, right? They traveled. They traveled the trail of the Fertile Crescent to get there. It's probably... We think it's about 1,200 miles. It would have taken them about 100 days one way, right, to get to where they were going, and then they had to go back, obviously. We see in the scripture that it wasn't like the day after Christmas that they showed up because they entered the house, right? More than likely, Joseph had found and gone back to his, his, his family, and so Jesus wasn't like a, you know, dirty little newborn, right? He was there for a couple, uh, at least a few months old, maybe four to six months old. They were Persians. They came. And they laid their gifts down, and we'll, we'll get there. But here's the cool thing about the Magi, and one of the questions that I have for us today. Right? In Luke's gospel, we see that he comes to the shepherds, right? And we see sort of those on the margins that are, that are led in and told the Christmas story. In Matthew's gospel, as we think about the Magi, they would not have been Jewish folk. They would not have been the in-religious crowd. And yet, they are given the star and the sign and walked and led to, to Christ, right? And what Matthew gets at in his gospel is he's opening up God's grace. He's revealing that God's grace is bigger than we could ever imagine and involving and looping in people that perhaps we weren't going to be in there, right? Matthew's concern is for all people. And so the question I have for us to ponder this morning or for you to ponder this morning as you, as you think about it is just as the Magi were invited into this, this Christian story, who are the people that we have been denying a part of our Christian story? Or who are the people that we have not allowed into the club? Or who are the people that, that I personally or you personally have said, ah, I don't know about that. Who have we othered? And how might we live into this and allow all to come to the table, all to come and to be a part of this, right? Now, maybe you're thinking, I haven't said no to anybody this year. Maybe we've said no without even thinking about it. Or have said no subconsciously, Right? And the way that we, we go about this and the way that we allow others and open up our table, and open up our circles bigger and bigger is to listen and to learn, right? This, last year, I want to say 2020, that was last year, so last year, right? But there was a lot of stuff going on, right, to put it under understatement, right? And one of the coolest things, one of the best experiences that I had last year, if you'll remember, there was, uh, uh, the, you know, the racial injustice, like, bubbled up big time and came here um, to the forefront over the last summer. And over last fall, I did a study with about 20 folks from around the country and several folks in this, in this church as well. Um, so, so you want to talk about race, right? And we, we didn't get a bunch of white folks to sit around and talk about our ideas of race, right? Um, we tried to get a diverse group. It wasn't as diverse as I'd hoped, but we, we chose an author who was an African-American woman 
so that we could hear from a voice that was different than our own. And one of the things that we did through that study and from listening and reading and growing is we learned ways that we, as the people who had gathered around in that group, were excluding without even realizing that we were excluding. And so I would encourage you this year to think about who are the people that we're not connecting with? Who are the people that we're either consciously or subconsciously saying, no, not really? And how might we pray to God, say, God, make me more open. God, help me learn. God, help me to see. Help me to open up my table and pull a seat up bigger and broader than I could ever imagine. That's the first question. Who are we missing? Who are we excluding? And how can we bring them in? The second question that Epiphany brings up for me, and hopefully I want you to think about as well, we talk about the gifts that the wise men bring, right? And this fulfills the prophecy from Isaiah. In Isaiah 60, it begins with, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Right? And, it, and it says that the people would come from all over the world, and then, Isaiah says, they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Right? And so they come bringing these gifts, fulfilling the prophet Isaiah. They bring gold, which was the gift that you would bring to kings, right? And we talked about in our Advent series that we proclaim Jesus as king of kings. And so you bring the gold to the king. They brought frankincense, which was often a spice that you would burn, uh, priests would use in the midst of sacrifice, which was sort of talk about foreshadowing what Jesus might do. And they brought myrrh, which is usually used in preparation for death or for burial. But gifts are a part of epiphany, right? They're a very big, big part of what they do. Um, and so the question I have for you this year as we ponder as well, one, how do we expand our circle? How do we include instead of exclude? But also, what gifts will you bring this year? What gifts will you bring to this church? What gifts will you bring to your family? What gifts will you bring to this community, right? Now, we have our offering, and yes, we need our financial gifts as we try to be in, in ministry to this, uh, to this community and around the world. But also, what gifts do you have? Do you have the gift of hospitality, right? And maybe you help greet and welcome those who maybe haven't been to a church in a very long time and they walk into the, to the vine and the first thing they meet is your smiling face behind the mask that says, hey, we're glad you're here, right? Maybe there's other ways that you can give of yourself. What, are you, what, what lights you on fire? What are you passionate about? And how might you offer that gift to either this church or to this community or to the world so that others might experience the fullness of all that we have to offer together? What might you bring before God? What gift do you have to offer? So how do we expand our table? Who are we including? Who are we excluding? What gifts might we bring? Just as the wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, what gifts might we have to bring and to offer this year? The next question we have, moving right along here, is we think about the star, right? And we talked, I talked about the beginning of the Bethlehem star as we followed. We're not really sure what it is. There's a good chance that it was something similar to what we saw a few weeks ago with the Bethlehem star. It could have been a star exploding that sort of stayed out there for a few months. Some people say it might be Halley's Comet. It, 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 comet. it really doesn't matter. All we know is there was a sign that the wise men followed. Right? And I mentioned earlier that they didn't just wake up on the, on the 26th and say, oh, look, there's a star, right? And they walked down the street. Oh, it's Jesus, gold, frankincense, myrrh, right? They traveled. It probably took them four to six months following this sign that God had put in front of them as they walked and walked and walked. And so the question this morning is, where are we willing to walk, right? Where are we willing to go this year? What are we willing to, to do this year, to follow, to journey? And there's something about walking that, that's pretty cool, right? I started in, um, I think it was around May, I decided that I was going to start walking three miles a day, right? Um, I can't run anymore because it hurts my knees. So I was going to walk, right? And there's this cool thing happened. At first, I was just walking, walking, you know, listening, have my, my earphones in, whatever. Then I started taking them out. But the more I walked around my neighborhood, the more I walked around Clemson, the more I walked around Berkeley in that area, I began to notice the same people that were out and about during the quarantine. And what used to be like a quick wave high was a stop and chat. Hey, how you doing, right? They learned, they learned the dog's name, right? They, all that kind of stuff. And then I started walking. As I walked through my neighborhood, I would see people out. I would begin, if I didn't stop and talk with them, or as I'd see, I would begin just to pray for that house or pray for the family that I knew that lived there, right? And as I walked and walked, I began to engage more in my community, I began to engage by knowing people, I began to engage more by praying for them. And there was something about that discipline of walking. And I walked every day. I, I, it got cold, so I stopped a little bit in December, right? But I walked every day for about five months, right, three miles a day. And my prayer life began improving. My people, community began, I began to know them and feel more connected as a part of that. 
So there's something powerful that happens in the walking. And so my question for you this, this year, as you seek to expand your table and think who are we including and excluding, as we seek to bring our gifts, the question is also, where are you willing to go? Right? If God is calling you to follow, to go for a walk, where are you willing to walk? Are you willing to take the journey and see where that might lead you? Right? And I don't know what your journey might be. That's something you've got to sort of figure out and think about and say, God, maybe show me a sign, get me somewhere, help me walk. One of the cool things I'm excited about, uh, ministry, that we've got, we've got great circles here at this group, at this church, um, uh, great women's groups, and we've got a uh, United Methodist men's group that's, that does a fantastic job. But we're also going to be launching in the next couple of months, uh, following up from our table for eight and sort of growing something bigger, um, launching small groups here at this church uh, for an opportunity for you to take a walk. And not just go walk by yourself, but take a walk with others. And looking out here, I know that some of you are involved in different circles and other groups, and you've had people that have sort of walked and rallied around with you. But I would encourage you to think as we sort of roll that out and do some, uh, start begin praying, God, are you leading me to go on a walk with others this year? And maybe I join a small group and see how that might lead and help me grow my faith, might help me grow in my community and how I serve and all those different things. So how are we going to expand our table, right? What gifts will we bring? Are we willing to take a walk this year with God and see what happens? And this fourth thing, this fourth thing I think is the most important. It's the most important thing that we learn from Epiphany, right? It says, the wise men came in, and immediately when they saw the Christ child, they dropped to their knees, and they paid him homage. They paid him homage. Now, this would have been something you would do before a king. It's where you would, you would lay down, and you would lay prostrate on the ground, and you would just say, God, you are, you, you are my king. You are my everything, right? The question as we begin this year, as we look at Epiphany, the biggest point here in Epiphany is, are we willing to put Jesus first? Are we willing and ready to worship? All during Advent, we talked about Emmanuel, God being with us. We talked about Savior and God coming and saving us from our sin and our hopelessness. We talked about the Messiah being the King of Kings. We talked about the light of the world coming and shining a light in us. And all those things, all those names are things that God does for us, right? He comes to be present with us. He comes to save us. He comes to shine light into our darkness. He comes to, to be our King and to lead us. But at Epiphany, we're reminded that all those things that God does for us, our one and only response should be to fall to our knees, pay him homage, and say, God, you and you alone are worthy of my worship. Epiphany reminds us as we begin the year, as we have the Christ child come a couple of weeks ago, that our number one response to God should be worship, to fall on our knees, to come not just on Sunday, but day in and day out saying, God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. We love you, God. Thank you for all and everything that you are. We come and we worship. Because worship is the lifeblood of what it means to be a person of faith. Worship is important. One of the cool things we experienced last semester at Clemson Wesley, our college ministry, we didn't get to do everything that we normally do. We didn't get to go on a fall retreat. A lot of our fun social activities didn't happen. But I, it was the best semester of worship that we ever had. When we got to come in this place and, you know, 85 college students around this room with nothing else that we could do except worship. And it was powerful. It would give me goosebumps every single Sunday night as we would come in here to worship. We couldn't do all the other stuff. What we could do was worship. And we were also one of the only groups that were allowing and able to come in and do worship at the time. And so students were flocking here to come and to sing, to praise, to give God worship. There's something powerful when we come and we worship. And we notice that it doesn't happen, and you look at the scripture, it didn't, the wise men didn't come and present their gifts and say, here's my gifts, maybe some strings attached, maybe, maybe not, right, and then worship. Before they brought their gifts, before we talk about who expanded the table, before you bring your gifts, before you talk about am I going on a journey or not, worship is primary. Come into God to say thank you. Come into God to say I love you. Come into God to say you are above all else. So that's where we are in Epiphany. As we sing songs about the star, I invite you to think about those four questions as you begin this year. Who's at our table? Who's not here? And what might we do to help bring them in so that all might come to know God's love and God's grace? May we ask God to open our hearts that we might realize that God's grace is available to all. What gifts will we bring this year? 
both financially, also our talents, our gifts, things that can help make this community look more like the kingdom of God. Are you willing to go on a walk? Are you willing to journey, not just sit still and sit and grow stagnant in your walk, but are you willing, are you willing to go on a journey and see where God might lead you this year? And in the midst of all that and through all that, are you willing to say, God, I'm ready to worship you with all that I have and all that I am, Lord, I am ready to worship you. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself all those years ago through your son, Jesus Christ. Coming down as Messiah, as King of Kings, as Emmanuel, as the light of the world. And as we think about all the things that you've done for us, O oh God, the ways in which you have revealed yourself to us, the ways in which you have comforted us, you have held us in our mourning, you have shown us the light, you have forgiven us. God, may our response simply be worship. Lord, help us to set aside all else. Help us to see you in the midst of the chaos and the crazy and simply give our hearts to you as we make you our number one, as we make you our only, as we bow down, drop to our knees, and pay homage to you just as the wise men did long ago. Or may we never forget our role with you, that you are God and we are here to worship at your feet. We love you, we praise you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. We'll come to our time now as we respond to God's word of giving of our, of our tithes and our offerings. Again, you can give online, you can text to give, or, or we invite you as we stand and sing to bring your gifts forward and place them in the basket. But as we receive, let us also stand and sing.
see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, our God, that is who you are. 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 can be seated. Come to our time in our service where we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. This has been a part of our, our service from the, from the beginning. Uh, we celebrate the sacrament of baptism where we incorporate people into the body of church. And when we come to this sacrament, this comes to us as we experience God's grace once more. We are nourished for our journey as we seek to worship God, to give our best gifts, to go on our journeys, and to include at this table. All are welcome here at this table. All of you have breath in your lungs. You have all been created in the image of God, and you all have a place here to come and experience the mysterious and gracious presence of Christ. I invite you to follow along when appropriate on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks and praise to you, God Almighty. We give you thanks, O Lord, that you created the heavens and the earth, that you formed in the middle of the darkness and the void. You said, let there be light. You made all that inhabit this earth, and you created us humankind. But you formed us in your image. You breathed life into us, and you called us good. We confess, O oh God, that there are times when we haven't lived into that goodness. We have not always loved you or our neighbors as we should. We have went away and worshipped other things, O oh God, but yet there you are, welcoming us back with your steadfast love time and time again. And for that, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. We come to this table, O oh God, we give you thanks as we remember it was you who sent your son, Jesus Christ, down to earth. That he would come in the form of a baby at Christmas time, but that he would grow up and he would teach the people. He would heal the sick. He would proclaim release to the captives. That he would ultimately die on a cross and be resurrected three days later, breaking the chains of sin and death. That we might know what it means to be a forgiven people, a people who can experience life and life abundant. And for that, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. We remember it was on the night in which Jesus was to give himself up for us that he was gathered with his disciples, and he took some bread. He blessed it, and he gave thanks to you, O God, and he gave it to his disciples who were there with him and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this often, and remember me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. And once again, he gave it to his disciples who were there with him and said, I want you to drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often, and remember me. And so for these, your mighty acts, O oh God, for the ways in which you have moved in our world, for the ways in which you continue to be present in our lives, we give you thanks and praise as we worship you and offer ourselves in union with Christ as a holy and living sacrifice, as together we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O oh Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon all who were gathered here this morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all who are worshiping with us online, wherever they may be. And pour out your Holy Spirit upon this fruit of the vine and from the gifts of the wheat of the fields. 
May this bread and juice be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the hands and feet of Christ, O Lord, that as we worship you, we might indeed also shine your light into the world. O God, we pray that you would make us one with you, make us one with each other, and make us one in ministry into all the world until we come and we feast at your final heavenly banquet table. We ask all these things in the holy and precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we share and break bread together and dine at this table together, it's a sharing in the body of Christ and reminding us that we are one in Christ. And when we drink from the cup, we drink from the cup that offers us forgiveness, new life, a reason to bow down and worship God, the King of kings, the Savior, God presence with us. I invite those who are assisting to, to come forward. And we will receive this morning uh, we, some of our double cup. Uh, if you haven't been with us in a while, we have a cracker and a cup on the bottom, and there's a juice cup on top. Uh, we'll, the, you'll get a dap of hand sanitizer from a couple of our ushers, and then take this back to your seat. Again, take your cracker, and then follow it with the grape juice. On your way out, you can, there's trash cans. Just hold it at your seat for a while. But as I mentioned at the beginning, all are invited to this table. All are invited. All who seek to live in love and peace with another. Maybe you're questioning this whole God thing. This is a table of grace where you can come and experience in some mysterious way God's presence. And so I invite you, as you're ready, as you feel comfortable, to come forward and receive this gift.
quick reminder, if you're willing to stay and help us do some undecorating, that'd be great. But, beloved, as we start this new year, as we think about all that God has done for us, how good God is, be reminded that our one and only response, our main job as a people of faith is to bow down and to worship, to worship the God who has created each and every one of us, the God who redeems us, and the God who is here at the table to sustain us along our journey. Go in peace, go in grace, and go in a spirit of worship. Amen.